Excellent. So let's uh, look now at a documentary that we'll be seeing next week on RTE, uh, which is the uh, the Keen Vieira Best of Enemies documentary. A fascinating documentary that everybody, I think, will have huge interest in because it reveals an awful lot about Keen. And let's look at his view on Ferguson. The two words the manager, and he spoke to me about a number of times, was control and power. That was how he worked. I think we can clearly see that because he's still striving for it now, even though he's not a manager. I don't think that will ever leave him. Um, I think there's massive ego involved in that. You know, you have a power and control over people and, and then you try and have it over people even when you're not working with them. I suppose the biggest compliment I can give him for all the games I played under him, I always felt he got it right. He always had a good feel for what the group needed, you know, in the sense of it might be a team talk, um, if a player stepped out of the line. He, he generally got it right. I thought his comments, Eamon, were more measured than the uh, than the media comment originally suggested. I thought they were much more vicious, I thought, when I read them in the paper. But I, th I thought he was quite moderate and quite measured in what he said this I time. I thought he was measured. Um, and But he did say some very hard things about what he called that man, Ferguson. Yeah. And there's clearly a great deal of bitterness. He said there's no relationship there. Um, I did mean, you get that sense when you were talking to him, when you did the book with him? No. When I, got, when I worked with him, Ferguson was the man and he owed a lot, he owed everything to Ferguson and he had an entirely different narrative. Uh, but that was only to be expected. Uh, he was there, he was captain of the team. I didn't expect him uh, to shop Ferguson. Uh, in but that, that was before. That was before he was. He left Manchester United. Well, oh, it was. Of course, book, it was. You know, I, I, I didn't. Well, when he left Manchester yeah. United, his Everything opinion changed. about his <laughs> opinion about Ferguson changed completely. And what? I thought actually last night, he he went out of his way, or during the documentary, he was out, out of his way to say as many bad things as he could about Ferguson. I thought it was. Did it you was, think so? Yeah, I thought it was wrong. Setting After scores, the success, was he? Yeah, after the success they've had together. I thought it was wrong. Yeah, well, I, ha I have to say in Keane's defence, Liam, that uh, Ferguson, he, he, he recounts how Ferguson thanked him for the 11 and a half years he'd given to the club. And Keane right. said, <laughs> well, it was actually 12, 12, and it was 12 and a half years. But he, what he said was that he was pitched out of the club. He had no club to go to. He was had injured. Had, he was had injured. Had injured. Well. Mm -hmm. he, he, there was a money issue which wasn't to his satisfaction. So I think there is residual bitterness there. I think what, for me, what was fascinating, all of it was uh, the reference there to power and control mm. over a club he is no longer the manager of. Now, mm. Roy Keane knows the score. For Manchester United fans, that is the most troubling uh, mm. remark that Keane made. And I didn't think he was, he, 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 well, I don't know how, he came out of badness. I don't know how true that is, that Ferguson is striving for control or power. It's, that might be just Roy Keane's opinion. Well, I he, haven't seen Ferguson interfere when uh, he picked at all. But we don't know what goes on behind the scenes, do we? Sorry? I'm, I, I, I think Roy Keane was referring to the fact that um, uh, Ferguson would in some way be controlling uh, Moyes. Well, the, no, um, the, well, no, I don't think that's the, the case at no, all. No, that he well, wouldn't be able no, to give no. up control more than anything else. Well, Did you see the documentary thing? last night? No, I didn't. I didn't. It's just, uh, I agree with Liam, it's sad, really, um, that these two had, who had so much success, and, and Keane yeah. was a vital part of yeah. that successful team, but in, in Keane's defensive, in Roy's defence, you've got to say, uh, Ferguson put a lot of things in that book, which is a, it's just a poor effort, because he wouldn't be a sir now if it wasn't for Roy Keane. Uh, he, he was a vital part, probably the main part, for that most successful yeah. time they've had. Mm. And then to come out and uh, insult uh, your captain, who's been at the football club for 12 or 12 and a half years. Um, I don't know what, what went through his head. Um, you know, it, it, it's just beyond belief. I, I don't see any reason why he could do that. And, and these players all made him. You yeah, know, that's uh, true. The that's manager's true. only as I good think, as his I players think, I think Did is right. I, I, I think that's a point Keid made last night. Mm. You know, he, he wants to interfere in David Beckham's choice of his wife. Of his wife, yeah. that's right. You know, and uh, he said you can't win with choir boys, he said. You have to be tough. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's not his business. You have to take business. on the manager occasion. But the other thing, Liam, is that it's obvious that he chose his successor to manage the biggest club in the world. Yeah, he was given that power by the Glazers, and wouldn't you?
Well, I, who's, who, well, no, no, I, answer me. You're asking me a question. Mm. You answer me a question. Who's more qualified to pick a successor, the Glazers or Ferguson? There's no answer to that. Of course, it's, it's Ferguson. Well, I can would I say he knows a bit more about football than. Yeah, can I, can I change the subject for a second? I thought Keane came across as a very appealing person, very driven. Like some yeah. of the stuff he said about about hurting and all that kind of stuff was amazing. But what what, what would you take out of that from the Irish point of view now, as the assistant manager to O'Neill? Well, I I would hope I I was never a friend of Keane's, and I kept my distance. I did the book. I always found him to be charming, mm -hmm. uh, funny, yeah, very funny, uh, charismatic mm -hmm. in a certain way. Lovely family situation, his children and his wife, very, very nice people, well-behaved children, a real good man. Mm. He now, is a good man. It, that was my, always my opinion. Um, but when he went on the pitch, he was different. And he talked last night in the documentary, it's well worth seeing, incidentally, about hating. Whereas Patrick Vieira was much more sophisticated. He was. And, he was and never ways, yeah. talked about yeah. hating. He talked about hoping and believing and stuff like that. I mean, it was an interesting oh, I agreed, I agreed a lot more with what Vieira had to say. Can I, can I, we, we, we're, we're running out of time. I want to ask you a question. You played against <coughs> both Vieira and, uh, and Keane. Uh, uh, which of the, was the tougher? Well, the tougher one was, was Vieira because he's, a, he's a physically, uh, he's got a bigger, bigger presence. Man, yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. I think with Roy, Roy Keane always had a, a huge impact on his team. He wasn't somebody who hurt you. It wasn't somebody who would, um, you know, try to 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 um, you know leave the foot in or, or, or hurt you on purpose. Whereas Vieira, you know, he was quick, he was powerful, he had, you know, with his long legs, it was very hard to get the ball of him. Whereas Roy Keane always had a much much big impact on his team. So from a personal point of view, I would play against Keane okay. rather right. than. All yeah. right, okay, we've got to leave us there. I'd love to ask a lot more questions of the three, but it's a wonderful documentary, and I I urge you all to uh, watch it next week, this time next week.